How do you measure free light chains? When we're measuring these light chains, we're measuring chains that are unconnected to the heavy chain molecule. And again, we're looking for an excess of either kappa or lambda. And typically, we know that there is some striking abnormality if the uh, amount of kappa over lambda, and usually that ratio is somewhere around, and it depends on the lab, maybe 0.6 to 1.7, for example. If that ratio is above 8, or usually less than 0 0.125. Most people think that that is a, a significant abnormality that should be investigated. One thing it's important to know that people who have kidney problems from any reason, whether that might be diabetes or hypertension, they often have higher levels of light chains at baseline. And we use the ratio, that is the difference uh, between kappa over lambda, to help tell us if there is an abnormality. And often people who do have a, a kidney problem or a creatinine level, for example, that is above one and a half milligrams per deciliter, they might have a slight elevation in that ratio, but usually it's not significant after everything sort of settles out. So the free light chain test is a new test that has been available to my Loma doctors in the past, for the past 15 years, I'm going to say. And it can be done in the urine or it can be done in the blood. The blood, we call it serum free light chain. and the urine, we call it urine free light chain. And this is an important test that we need to be doing every time somebody has myeloma in combination with all of the other blood markers that we use for myeloma, like the SPEP and the immunofixation and quantitative immunoglobulins. Because there's gonna be a percentage, about 25 to 30%, that are gonna have a negative SPEP and a negative M spike when we do the regular SPEP and immunofixation, but are gonna have a positive light chain. And if we overlook that, then by the time the patient comes to us, they're gonna have end organ damage and significant disease. So we can easily detect light chains in the, in the blood, and this free light chain taste can replace the UPEP when we're doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's a very convenient test that we can do on a monthly basis to monitor response. But another interesting thing that free light chains give us the ability to do is that there are occasions that by detecting abnormal free light chains in the blood, it can hint us to an early relapse before we actually see the relapse in an SPEP. So just to have a, a clear understanding of the difference between an SPEP and a free light chain, the myeloma cell, just like the healthy plasma cell, is going to be making a protein that is called an uh, immunoglobulin that is going to be released into the blood. Because the myeloma cell is not completely functional and the mechanism of protein making is that may be altered, it might spew out parts of the protein and not the entire protein. And that's what's called free light chains. We use free light chains and we assemble them to make one whole antibody, which is an M spike. And in myeloma cells, we can be spewing up both an M spike and free light chains. And that's why it's so important that whenever we do myeloma testing, we do the whole uh, spectrum of SPEP immunofixation and free light chain assays.